Now, in other areas, to make water available for new wells, ecology had to actually set aside a specific amount of water. And these are called reserves. And in the areas shown in green on this map, in the rule proposal, what we call them the reserve management areas. This is the way to name them. There's enough water set aside in each reserve to take care of all the new residences that are expected in each sub-basin out through the year 2025, although in most areas, water should be available much longer than that. And as I explained earlier, 500 gallon per day water conservation standards available for each new well user in these reserve management areas. And then once this reserved water has been given out to new users, that that's sort of, that's sort of an end point. There's a transition at that stage. The new users that come after that point in time will have to rely on an alternative strategy for water supply. So this rule is not the end of water management decision making in water safety. The next generation, as Tom sort of alluded to, will also need to be making difficult decisions about water. <coughs> There's a number of factors that converge that make water supply in the Chimicum Creek subbasin particularly challenging. And it's going to be challenging until local officials can develop an alternative water supply for the subbasin. And I'm talking in particular about areas outside of the PUD service area. So the, the factors that we're focused on and have been trying to address is that late summer flows in the creek are already very low. There are threatened salmon species that live in Chimicum Creek. And as required by state and federal law, local salmon recovery efforts have made substantial investments to enhance habitat in the creek. And we need to protect those investments. And then as Tom mentioned, there is a large unused water right that when put to full use will probably affect flows in the creek. So until an alternative water supply can be developed, new uses of water outside of the views these service areas limited to indoor use only. And there's no gallon limit on that use other than the restriction to use it indoors only. And as for the rest of the watershed, new uses would be measured. And fortunately, the Wire 17 planning unit has been investigating uh, water supply options for Chimicum that some of them look fairly promising, but they're a few years away. So once an alternative supply can be put in place, this indoor use only restriction would be lifted. So this is a stopgap measure that we hope doesn't last very long. We hope that um, local efforts can move things forward as quickly as possible so that this restriction won't happen pretty long. Throughout the entire watershed, the ecology proposing allow the use of rainwater collection and, and use. So you wouldn't have to apply for a water right to collect and use rainwater. This is a major change in the way the state is approaching the use of rainwater. The only requirements that we're proposing in this rule connected to that is that the rainwater must be collected from a roof of a building that serves some other purpose. It has to be from the roof of a house or a barn or a garage, something that is already going to be built. And that all the water must be used on site. We're not proposing uh, any limit on the size of the roof or the cistern, because we believe these would be self-limiting. We've got questions on that. We've got Kurt here to answer questions. And as for future water rights, those who have to apply, actually apply for water right or pending water right applications, in general, once the rule is adopted, these new uh, water rights must not affect streams, or you must be able to mitigate the use or offset the use with water that you are using with water in the same subbasin. So how does this proposal protect fish and streams? In 13 streams, ones that are all labeled here, we're proposing to set in-stream flows. Setting an in-stream flow is essentially establishing a water right for the water in the stream. Priority date for that water right will be the effective date of the rule. The flows are set in bounds to protect fish and the other in-stream resources that are required as required by state law. And setting these in-stream flows 
House protects drinks by limiting new withdrawals. Adopting the rule does not put water back into the streams. And we don't expect to see these in-stream flows actually present in the stream all the time. We know the stream flows are variable. So, in addition to setting these in-stream flows, Ecology is proposing to close streams to new surface water withdrawals and to close the groundwater that feeds the streams from new withdrawals. And there are two exceptions. One um, is the Big Colstein River, and the other is Chimpanzee Creek. They will both be open in the winter. In these coastal areas, the rule is also intended to protect very small streams. So again, we will be relying on that conservation standard to limit withdrawals to protect these streams. And we're also proposing to close all of these small streams as well as the groundwater feeding these streams. And the, the conservation standard and the restrictions on permit exempt wells that I described earlier, those features of the rule would be exceptions to these closures. We would allow those uses even though we are proposing to close groundwater and, these, and that are connected to these streams and the streams themselves. And another really important feature of this is to keep in mind that the rule is only one part of a broad range of management efforts to protect and enhance streams in, in the watershed. What it does is limit new withdrawals to make sure there will always be water in streams. And there are other efforts ongoing such as habitat enhancement, replanting streamside vegetation, cleaning of water quality, managing stormwater, um, managing sanitary sewage, all of those are needed to protect streams. This is only one piece of that bigger picture. So in addition to protecting water for streams, the rule protects water for people. And by managing future withdrawals, um, what we do is make sure that water will be in place for the folks who already have existing wells and existing water rights. And the water management framework that we're proposing would make water available for new well users 